Um, okay, so those are the three parameters that are interesting, and they provide us with our two main timing constraints that uh, can arise in synchronous logic and that will now go with us until the end of this lecture and actually until the end of the course. So the first one is called max delay. Um, the data doesn't have enough time to pass from one register, register to the next before the next clock edge. Okay. Then again, we have min delay, which means that the data path is so short that it passes through several registers during the same clock cycle. In other words, there was kind of a race and the data just flew through two registers instead of going through one and stopping at the next one. Max delay violation are a result of slow data paths. So what happened was the data again didn't have enough time to pass from one register to the other. That's because the data path was very long. It was a very slow path. Okay, um, remember that the data has to ar arrive at the clock bef at least T setup time before uh, the, the sampling. So we often call this max delay path a setup path because we use T setup or we are not able to make it to the next register t at least T setup time before the next clock cycle. On the other hand, min delays happen when the data is so, so fast. It's so, such a short data path that um, we can have a change at the next uh, at the next register before t hold is passed after the clock cycle and since t hold is relevant we call these hold paths so um, max delay and setup path and min delay and hold paths are synonymous and remember that max delay are slow and that also means that when we discuss timing corners we will bring ourselves to the worst case we'll figure that our data has to be as slow as possible to find out any uh, possible max delay violations. And on the other hand, uh, min delays are, mean our data is too fast. So what we'll usually do is we will go and look at the fastest possible um, path that can happen, the fastest possible operating conditions to find our max delay violation, our min delay violations. So now let's look deeper at this max constraint. Again, this little turtle over here, this slow guy. Let's see what makes up our clock cycle. And again, here we have the um, clock signal, which we'll see in a second. We have this data that we change once at the beginning of the, uh, of the path from zero to one. And we have two points along our timing path, A and B. B is, of course, at the uh, entrance to the second register. And A is our Q, is the net right at our Q point. And there's some sort of logic between which has some sort of a T logic delay in between the uh, input and output. And that's completely combinatorial or combinational. OK, so what happens is, is that our clock rises over here. And the rising clock causes this um, TCQ uh, delay. So we see it over here. A changes from 0 to 1, TCQ after the clock rises. Then there is this T logic path that goes by. And B changes over here, um, T logic after, um, after our rise at A. Okay, what we need to make sure of is that this change, which is going to be our last change in this example, happens at least T setup before the next clock edge. When does the next clock edge happen? According to the period of our clock. So the period of the clock happens over here. This is the next rising edge. And we just have to make sure that that happens at least T setup after this last change, and then everything is okay. What we get here is a type of a race. So we call this green path over here from the clock through the queue through the logic and to the D point of the register as the launching clock edge. We will also call this often the arrival time, okay, or the data arrival time at the next register, okay. On the other hand, we have the capture clock, okay. This is the path that captures the data at this register. This is called the capture path, okay. Um, and that happens one period later. So this this is one period, okay, a big T. It happens one period after the launching path. And we have to make sure that the capture path um, happens uh, once the data has already arrived. So we need to make sure that the capture path is larger than the data path, okay? So we need T capture to be larger than T um, logic. But it's not only that, it's actually a T plus the T capture because it happens one cycle later, or T launch, I should say, launch. 
Okay, so let's see that in a, in a sim more simplified graphic. So we have this type of a register to register path with some sort of combinational logic inside and the point where the clock reaches the first flip-flop to the point where the clock reaches the second flip-flop and we want our launch path to be shorter than our capture path. And how do we um, show that? We have t, the big, uh, uh, the big t is the clock period, it has to be larger than the tcq Okay, that's TCQ plus the T logic, that's T logic. Okay, plus the setup time of this guy. You can also have the setup time of this guy being uh, uh, on a minus on this side of the equation. Um, that is the simplified version of our, of our uh, timing constraint, of our max constraint, but there are non-idealities. The clock it will be non-ideal later on in the course. And so what we have to do is we have to define clock skew and some other guard bands. So let's start with our clock skew. Um, positive clock skew is defined as the time that the second clock, the, the, the clock to the capture register arrives after the, um, the clock arrives to the launch register. And so therefore it's in this direction. That's positive clock skew. In other words, if this clock happens after this clock, we get negative clock skew. So it's a minus of this direction, but that's just the definition. Okay, therefore, what we see is that clock skew, this green thing, is added to the capture path. Then again, we also would like to guard band for other things that we'll discuss a bit later on in the course, which are all kinds of margins that can go into the, 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 the data path to ensure that we are um, actually catching all of the cases. So this margin over here is part of the launch path. And therefore, when we add these two deltas, these two um, parts, we have the T plus this delta skew over here. This would be delta skew, and this will be delta margin. So T plus delta skew is on the capture path, which has to be larger than T CQ plus T logic, plus the T setup that we discussed already, plus this delta margin that we have added here. And we will discuss later on where delta margin comes from and where delta skew come from. So that's our max constraint, our min constraint. So min constraints are always tough to understand at this point because we do have an ideal clock and often registers have even a negative hold constraint, a negative T hold. But I will go over it anyway on, on the basic type of a, of a view and later on we will understand this or we will perceive it better. Um, it's just a definition, but we, we, we have to see why it happens once we add um, non-idealities in the clock. So hold problems occur due to the logic changing before T hold is passed. So in this case, um, what we have here is this logic, which is really fast. So this is short. Okay. And what, what happens is it has nothing to do with the cycle time. We have the same clock cycle. The clock rises. It reaches both here and here. It may not reach at the same time, but not because it's two separate edges of the clock, but because there may be some skew along this path, okay? So um, you have to remember that hold time is relative to a single clock edge and not two subsequent clock edges. Okay, so let's see how that works. The clock rises at this point, and what we have is our same TCQ that makes a change over here. And again, here, because we are looking at the fastest possible time, we'll look at the quickest type of TCQ possible or TCQ under the quickest and fastest operating conditions. Then we go through our T logic and our T logic, as you see here, is very short. Think of something like a shift register, which, are, which is connected um, with two flip flops together with no logic in between. That's going to be a real short T logic path. So since the data had to stay stable for T hold after the clock for the second register, the change at B had to be at least T hold after the clock edge. So what we want to see here is that from this clock edge, at least T hold time passed before we had this change arrive at B. Okay, so that is, that is what happens and we'll see why um, this might not be. You see that there is no second clock edge here. This second clock edge is irrelevant. It's all relative to this clock edge. We want to see that this happens from here until the logic changes at the next register takes at least T hold 
amount of time. So let's look at that again, looking at the capture and the launch path. So the launch path in this case is again, this TCQ, this guy, plus this T logic, but it's gonna be some sort of a minimum logic. It's also gonna be some sort of a minimum TCQ, okay? Um, on the other hand, our hold path, well, we don't have a big T because it's according to the same clock edge, but we do have a hold time constraint, okay? So, this is the capture path that's triggered on the same clock edge, and what we see is that we want this plus this, this is the launch path, T launch, in this case, to be bigger than T capture. That's our, um, that's our max delay, uh, min delay constraint, our hold constraint, okay? So, it comes out TCQ plus T logic has to be larger than the T hold of this register. Okay, that's pretty easy to meet because TCQ is always going to be um, larger than zero. You, I can't say always, but in uh, most normal cases. And T logic is also going to be larger than zero. Um, T hold, as I said, can be zero or even negative for some flip flops. So this is almost given at a synthesis stage. And that's why during synthesis we didn't discuss hold paths at all and we, didn't, we wouldn't check it at all. But once we add clock skew, and several other guard bands because T-hold is a very big problem. What happens is, again, this is the positive clock skew, and it's on the capture path, which is over here. So we have to add this delta skew over here to the capture path, okay? And we'll also add our margin, but this time we want the margin to be um, not according to some sort of a definition because this margin is right now very abstract and we haven't said what it is. We just are saying that this margin is gonna be worse for us. And since it's on the data path and we want the data path to be bigger than the capture path, we're gonna add it in a negative uh, manner. So what we get to is that TCQ plus the T logic over here minus this margin, whatever this margin is, um, which we will define later on and it, it's kind of fluid what the definition is, will be bigger than T hold plus this now delta skew that we added here. And if delta skew is really large, we may not meet um, this thing or if delta margin is really large as well. Um, and that's why hold becomes very important. But the important thing to look at here is that there is no parameter such as our big T, which was an external parameter. So if in during setup, we could just lower our clock period and meet the setup uh, uh, timing, there is no such possibility in hold. So let's summarize that whole thing. For setup constraints, the data has to propagate fast enough to be captured by the next clock edge. Remember our data, we're looking at the slowest possible thing that our data could be. So T launch is really, really slow. It becomes very big. And we have to make sure that it's smaller than the, the, the clock cycle plus whatever the capture that, that is uh, affected by delta skew. Okay, this sets our maximum frequency. And if we have setup failures, failures, we can always slow down the clock. So again, T is this external um, variable. If we have some sort of failure here, we can just take T, make it larger, which means to slow down the clock, make the frequency slower, and then um, we will meet the setup constraint. So we may not be able to sell our product at the speed that we wanted to or at the highest speed possible, but at least it will be functional. That is not the case for hold. In hold, we have um, the, the data path has a delay has to be long enough so it isn't accidentally captured by the same clock. So we don't skip a register and ruin our whole state machine, okay? So this time we have this launch path has to be larger than the capture path. And um, the problem is for T launches that are real fast, in other words, if T launch is really slow and we have some skew on our capture path, then uh, we may not meet that constraint. The problem is that it's independent of the clock period. There is no big T in this um, equation. And since there is no big T here, we can't actually do anything after we have manufactured the chip to save that. And in this case, if we have a hold failure, we have to throw that chip away.